Let me set the scene. The year was 2020. It was to be my last year of high school. The future was exciting yet nerve-wracking, though mainly exciting. I was enjoying being at the top of the school, getting to sit in the special seating area that they have only for seniors. I had just passed my driving test and was loving the independence that came with having a car. You could go anywhere, at any time, with anyone. It was great. It was the beginning of a new decade too, the 20s. The next 10 years would be my 20s too. Some of the best years of your life, they say. Of course, I'm sure you can tell where this is going. Yes, towards the end of 2019 and into 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic was beginning to take its hold around the world. But that's not what I'm really here to talk about today. You know that from reading the title of the video. My name is Nathan. I have 520 hours in Animal Crossing New Horizons, and I talk to more virtual animals on a daily basis than I do actual people. In this video, I'd like to share with you my experience of Animal Crossing and how it improved my mental health during the lockdown of 2020. Back in 2018, Nintendo revealed that a new Animal Crossing game would arrive on the Switch. At the time, the game had no subtitle, no gameplay, and a tentative release date of 2019. This was announced in the form of a teaser, after the reveal of Isabelle as a playable character in Super Smash Bros Ultimate. At the time, I probably just shrugged. I'd played New Leaf and liked it, but wasn't nostalgic for the series, and personally didn't feel that Isabel had earned the right to represent Animal Crossing in Super Smash Bros over, say, Tom Nook or Tortimer, or any of the other prominent characters. However, I wasn't one to get angry on Twitter, so on with my life I went. Fast forward almost a year to E3 2019, and the first trailer for the newly titled Animal Crossing New Horizons was showcased, followed by more gameplay from Nintendo Treehouse. This was our first proper look at the game, showing off its brand new mechanics like being able to change the layer of things outside of your home, terraforming and further developments to your island. As well as the new trailer and gameplay, it was also announced that the game would be delayed from its 2019 release and was confirmed to be available on the 20th of March 2020. This was the announcement that really piqued my interest in the game. It just looked so much more creative and customizable than previous games in the series. I was definitely excited, however I still had no idea of how this game would come to impact me and also of just what state the world would be in by the time March 2020 rolled around. Our last year of high school was set to finish after exams in May, followed by a prom and then that was that. However, in reality, it happened slightly differently. We were told on the Wednesday that our last day would be the Friday. This was all perfectly justified, that should go without saying. It coincidentally meant that our last day of school was the same day that Animal Crossing New Horizons would release, creating in retrospect what would become a strange transition from life before and life during lockdown. I bought the game on release day, and played it for a while at midnight. It wasn't going to be a busy school day tomorrow anyway. I just remember feeling happy. Not overjoyed, not amazed or astounded or any of these big descriptive words. I just remember feeling happy. One of the first things you do in Animal Crossing is name your island. In the past, I had named mine after the place where I live in real life. However, I was a kid back then, and this time I wanted to be more creative, more unique. I already live in this place in real life. I didn't want to emulate that in the game. I wanted escapism. Escapism. That's what the game is. That's what video games are for people. Movies, television, music. It's escapism. So that's what I named my island. I knew I would be needing that wonderful thing called escapism. Of course, I thought I'd only need it for a few weeks, maybe a month. Now, two years later, that need for escapism still hasn't completely gone away. I don't feel the need for it as much now as I did back then, 
However, now that I am aware of my need for it, perhaps it will never completely go away. Perhaps it was always there to begin with. So, with the island name and my layout chosen, I landed the seaplane and stepped off onto my own deserted island. Little did I know I would be stuck there for quite a long time. Lockdown was, as you will surely remember. See no friends, go no place, and hear the news each day about how many people died in the past 24 hours. It wasn't a happy time, at all, and I'd say it's safe to assume that it had a big impact on most people's mental health. In fact, the vast majority. For me, it took a while to set in, but by the end of summer I was pretty well beaten down by it. The days felt longer, time felt slower, I had nothing but time on my hands and a lot of time was spent in my own thoughts. Naturally, you feel concerned for family and friends. You can only live in the past because the future becomes so unclear. So that's what I was doing. I took on the project of scanning family photos, archiving and organising every photo I have of friends and of my life. I loved it. I now have a hard drive containing over 25,000 photos and video clips containing everything from my life and the generations of family before me. However, it resulted in me feeling like I was living in the past, experiencing joy vicariously through memories and photos, a lot of which were photos I didn't even take and wasn't present for. Of course, photographs are how you remember things, and happy memories are supposed to bring you joy, but you shouldn't rely on them for that. However, that's what I was doing at the start of lockdown. Animal Crossing kept me in the present, kept me looking forward to tomorrow instead of longing for the past. I believe I have Animal Crossing to thank for keeping my head above the water. I played it every day for six months, for at least an hour, sometimes more. I had the daily routines of harvesting fruit, digging for fossils, talking to the animals, fishing, bug catching, shopping, all of these things you could do every day, giving you a reason to turn on the game. I understand the monotony some may feel at this idea. These days sometimes I feel the same. However, during the lockdown, having this daily routine was something I and many others needed. We had been taken away from the daily routines of our lives and forced to sit secluded at home with only a small bubble of people to talk to, or even worse, some people had nobody. Talking to the animals in the game was just as normal to those in isolation as talking to friends would be. So much of Animal Crossing was able to replace the routine of our day-to-day -day life. Obviously, we don't all go around picking fruit and digging fossils, but the principle behind all of these things is what I'm referring to, not the physical acts. I could spend almost entire days of the summer working on terraforming my island. I've had two massive reorganisation projects already, both of them within the first year of the game's release, simply done because I had the time to do them. And the bells, too. Those fruit and fossils don't go to waste, trust me. It was great. If I hadn't been keeping myself busy with these things, then I don't know where I'd have ended up in my own head. Maybe I would have actually got something productive done instead, like worked on my music career or this YouTube channel. But I guess we'll never know. What I do know is that this game was a saviour when it came to my day-to-day -day positivity. When days and weeks would go by, with nothing going on, it was my Animal Crossing island that kept me talking and excited about what I'd do next. The game very quickly became my go-to over lockdown for that reason. I was enjoying it, more than I ever expected I would. It was acting as a substitute for my social life. The game encouraged an interest in nature. I took on multiple projects in real life to do with the garden, painting fences and furniture, doing it with the care and attention that was instilled in me by playing Animal Crossing. The idea that you can't get everything done in a day, meaning you have to space out tasks and manage your time, all of this translates into real life practice. Having patience and taking the time to do things properly were all great lessons to take away from the game. For those who don't know, the gameplay of Animal Crossing runs on a real-time clock 
meaning the time of day in the real world is set to match the time of day in the game. Also a part of this are multiple events and yearly one-off experiences that line up with real-life holidays like Easter, Halloween or Christmas. Having that small dose of new content interspersed with the day-to-day -day routine to look forward to every month or so for the first year was enough to keep me and most others coming back for more. Today the game's updates have concluded, with the last being a major 2.0 update, adding the caravan site for shops to Harv Island, crops to grow like tomatoes or wheat, and the long-desired Brewster's Cafe and Gyroid. Also added was paid DLC in the form of Happy Home Paradise, which takes the Happy Home Designer 3DS game and essentially tapes it onto the base New Horizons. By the time this content was released, most players had become burnt out on the game, be it due to the slow reveal of new content or simply due to the repetitive nature of the game's daily tasks. Personally, I was still playing very consistently when the new content launched. While lockdown restrictions were in the process of being lifted, people's lives began to get back to some version of normality. I had started university during 2020, with the first year being entirely carried out online. This meant that the social life lost with the end of high school wasn't replaced in any form for over a year so I was still quite reliant on my precious escapism and its inhabitants. While I owned the DLC, I was never particularly interested in furniture customization or designing your home interior. I was never very good at it. So, to be honest, I haven't played much of the Happy Home Paradise DLC. Even after a year, I still didn't feel particularly burnt out on Animal Crossing. It was certainly true that I was playing it less than I did when it first released, but I was still enjoying the game and that feeling of escape that it brought me. Eventually, the university got its act together and allowed for on-campus lessons and interaction to take place. This was a big step in the right direction on our way out of multiple lockdowns. It was a big relief for my life in general. I had a purpose, a reason to be out of the house. I wasn't sitting watching Neon Genesis Evangelion, or its subsequent films, or the podcast I listened to for 29 hours of. Yeah, maybe an anime about depression didn't exactly help me. But regardless, university was a big deal, and it helped a lot. It was at this point though, almost naturally, that my Animal Crossing dependency began to slow down. As I'm writing this, it's now March 2022. Next week, Animal Crossing New Horizons will celebrate its second anniversary, and on the same day, it'll be two years since I left school. It's likely both of these events will go by with little fanfare. The latter one, because I don't intend to celebrate the anniversary of me leaving school, but as for Animal Crossing, it will likely go uncelebrated not by the community, but by Nintendo which is a shame. Animal Crossing New Horizons became the series' best-selling entry only six months after its release, with a total of 29 million units sold, and it is now the second best-selling game on the Switch. As of December 2021, the game has sold 37 million copies, a number which likely will be a few million higher by now, and will only grow as the Switch continues to sell. The unfortunate thing about all of this is that Nintendo insists they are done supporting the game, meaning no new free updates and no new paid DLC. This is the game. It is done. Millions may own the game, but how many of them are still playing to this day? Who are talking about it online and sharing it with their friends? These are the things that keep the brand relevant and keep people using their Nintendo Switch. While the sale has been made and Nintendo has the money, they surely should still pay attention to expanding the user experience. Personally, I don't play Animal Crossing now as much as I once did. I don't enjoy it in the same way as I used to, and I've almost become nostalgic for the time when all I wanted to do, and really all I had to do, was play the game and watch its world go by. My mental health I don't think has fully recovered from lockdown, 
and I don't know if it will. I'm sure I'm not alone in that boat, and there will be others much more heavily affected than I have been. To those people, I wish only the best for you. Animal Crossing did wonders for me the past few years, and it's not surprising that the game did so well considering the world it launched into. A world full of uncertainty and panic. An isolated world. Animal Crossing helped combat all of these things. While it reflects the world in many ways, it never once reflected the terrible situation that was going on. People liked it for that. I liked it for that. It provided the escapism that I chose to name my island after. The break from reality that millions around the world needed at that time. I'm so glad it was there for me when I didn't know where to look, and that it will always be there should things take a turn for the worse and we need it to fill a hole in our lives. So thank you, Animal Crossing. Thank you. <laughs>